Good afternoon. I'm Nick D for VIS and nearly 65% of the votes, 35% of the votes. You guys voted for Communist Malaya and the Cold War Iron Curtain mod. We're on update point three, the Crescent, the Chakra, and the Tiger. When I first moved into my freshman dorm, first year of college, it was still this update. So, uh, like, there's not a lot of new content, so to speak. But we're going to be playing one of my uh, pretty fun nations, honestly. The Malayan National Liberation Army under Chin Peng. You know it's going to be a fire mod when you can see MLA underscore gathering underscore storm underscore description. Let's get onto the map. We are not even a state. We are this little liberation army. We have uh, paramilitarism and Asian underscore illiteracy underscore three. So uh, we are a Marxist Leninist social state. And we our ruling party is the MC, MCP led by this guy, Chin Peng. And so uh, let's also see custom game rules if there are any. I will have it set to historical focuses. Oh, actually, they they do got this. Uh, let's see Soviet foreign policy. We could do historical or aggressive. Um, I don't want World War Three, but. Ooh, actually, let's just go default, just to be Actually, never mind. Let's go aggressive. A uh, power struggle. Uh, we can do Stalin lives. Various succeeds Stalin. Uh, historical. Uh, I'm going to go historical. I don't, I don't like Beria. He's, uh, he's a rapist. Uh, Return of Spanish Monaco. Morocco, I mean, yeah. Uh, Greek NATO membership. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Asia, reform of the Kuomintang. We could have them win the Civil War. Actually, let's do that because I've never seen that happen before. So, uh, aftermath of the defeat. Chinese stance of Vietnam. Where do we find it? I, I don't want to hold up all this, by the way. Uh, I hold up the gameplay, I mean. But, uh, let's see. Can we disaster you know? I'm trying to find. All this stuff is... Okay, it's uh, it was definitely up here. I missed it. I think. Reform the Kuomintang uh, requires Kuomintang won the Chinese Civil War. It's probably somewhere. Uh, I feel like I've saw I've seen it before. Like I, I think we passed it, but let's let's go further down than for than uh, fully see Egypt. Not really like. That much interesting things. Africa, uh, not not super fan, no real super fans yet. I did, I did play long enough that Biafra. I actually witnessed a Biafran war. Didn't get a super fan, unfortunately. Um, uh, aftermath of defeat, temporary provisions, abandoned hope. Uh, come on, where 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 would it be? Um, I'll make a pause and we'll, I'll see if I can find it. Okay, I couldn't figure it out. I don't think there's a custom game rule, sadly. So, let's get into the map. We have seven divisions, infantry divisions, and they're just three by twos with M1 carabines. And we're going up against, uh, Malaysia right here. The Federation of Malaysia. But, all is not lost. You can see... Uh, we have Malayan Emergency, and we have to basically accumulate victory points. So, Battle of the Simmer River, Operation Termite, Raid Jungle Bases from Kuala Lumpur, uh, Raid Jungle Bases from Brak, uh, Raid Jungle Bases from Terengganu, Drive the MLA into Exile, and then the Liberation of Malaya. We have a bunch of, we have a, we have a pretty good focus tree, actually. Like, it's, it's surprisingly decent. It's, it's gonna, uh, like... We're going to be on this for a while, but we're going to do the anti-British war. Uh, no f uh, national focus prerequisites and description, but we'll get an event called the anti-British war. Let's also go through our tech tree. Uh, let's get pro individual protection and also man packs one. Free civilian factories. Uh, let's try to get a... Um, let's just try to get an industrial park. Oh, let me see. Uh, industrial park. Right. Oh, come on. I guess we're not able to construct anything. We try one more time. There we go. Okay, uh, free military factories, all on M1 carabines. 
uh, low manpower, we don't have an economy, we have a uh, 1 billion GDP, and uh, what we could do is potentially take out a 25 billion dollar loan and then use it to buy weapons from the Eastern Bloc, as you can see, negotiate arms contracts, uh, Eastern Bloc, or people's arm, the armed companies, and we need political power for that. So I'll see you guys once we get any events or the anti British or once we complete the anti British war. Uh, let's also look at our laws before that. We are a semi recognized state, unarmed nuclear stockpile, total mobilization, closed economy, and extensive conscription. We are decentralized, no welfare, nothing on spending. Socially, we are um, moralist, regressive, traditionalist, nothing. Uh, with regards to this, I think state unions actually. We also, you can see we have new modifiers, state repression, clergy tolerance, MCP strength, and then national resource modifiers and food consumption. So we're actually sh a little short on food also. So as I said, I'll, uh, let's also actually, again, before that, let's get our leader, Chen Pang, our glorious leader. And, um, I'll see you guys once we get this event. We also could, as you, as you can see here, we might be able to start doing these soon, but this says 1950. Some of this says 1954 for Operation Termite. But we'll do a lot of stuff through this. So I'll see you guys once we get the anti-British war. Okay, we got the anti-British war. Uh, comrades, after our brave resistance against Japanese fascism, our colonial overlords have returned to this land. As we speak, English dogs pillage our countryside, starve our people, and exploit our nation. With every passing day, the fruit of our labor is stolen and used to entrench colonial rule. Uh, this is our last chance to throw the British into the sea. If we fail, our proud people will remain in shackles. But shall we succeed, all Malaysia will be free from starvation, fear, and tyranny. We will liberate all of Malaysia. Then uh, the Soviet RDS-1 nuclear test. The Soviet Union successfully tested its first nuclear weapon in the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic. The 22 kiloton yield device was designed by the Kurachev Institute and armed with plutonium produced at the Chelyabinsk 40 nuclear facility. The drop itself resembles the American Fat Man dropped on Nagasaki. The Soviets des designated the test as RDS-1. The success is viewed as the culmination of intense Soviet research and development to counter the monopoly on nuclear weapons enjoyed by the United States. The Kremlin warmly congratulated the scientists and officials who made this great achievement. The American government discovered the test after an Air Force weather reconnaissance aircraft collected samples confirming a nuclear detonation. As news spreads, Western intelligence services will be baffled as they did not expect the Soviets to achieve a nuclear detonation for a number of years, one step closer to midnight. Uh, but now let's get retreat to the jungle. This will give us rampant trench foot, which will give us division speed minus 30%, and a malaria outbreak, which will remove some recruitable population. And let's also, uh, you can see I nego off camera, I negotiated a camera with the People's Republic of China and like their armory. Uh, so what we're going to do, ROS 1, 2, 1. P yeah, People's Republic. Uh, for a second, I was doubting myself. What we're going to do is, uh, let's see, if borrow from a loan from the International Monetary Fund. Uh, Downfall will pay it back. And yeah, you can see they, they, have, some, they have some stuff on us. And we're going to use that to buy, let's see, 2,000 guns from the People's Republic of China. And we're going to use the rest of the money to eventually work slightly towards paying back the IMF. They're imperialists. We don't, we're not going to pay them back. But I'll see you guys once we get retreat to the jungle. And uh, relevant to the Asian situation, we have the fall of Shanghai. After a better campaign, PLA forces entered Shanghai victoriously. Both the PRC and ROC viewed control of Shanghai, the largest and most economically powerful city in China. Control of the city is seen as essential for either side to claim victory. Both committed large uh, military forces to, for the campaign. The ROC hope 
both to maintain control of the city and use as a base to eventually restore their rule across China, but the communists that control the city will greatly help legitimize its rule across China and cripple ROC resistance. The ROC forces fought intensely, but due to several military blunders, their forces were overwhelmed by the PLA. The PLA claims to have captured many prisoners and large amounts of equipment, though the ROC denies the claim. Considering how much resources the ROC committed to defending Shanghai, observers now believe the PLA may have an insurmountable advantage over the ROC on the mainland. Another blow to the Kuomintang. Let's also uh, see our guns now. We got uh, we got a bunch of uh, guns now, so that should make our divisions punch a little harder. Speaking of that, um, you can also see I, I was a little wrong. It's fire through these focuses, not really this, I guess. I, what I think this is, is like, just if you succeed in it, it adds, it like, it triggers, and then adds uh, victory points. So far, we're 250 behind the Malayan government. We're going to we're gonna show them what's coming. Uh, but I'll see you guys once we get retreat into the jungle. To our south, in Indonesia, we have ceasefire announcements. A roundtable conference will be held in the Netherlands later this month. For talks to occur, there must be a complete ceasefire in Java and Sumatra. After discussions, it was agreed that Java will have a ceasefire beginning on August 2nd, while Sumatra will start its ceasefire on August 12th. August 11th, that's just a weird... Well, uh, it's August 12th for... Uh, Sumatra. Once all fighting has ended, there will be a process to oversee the transfer of military authority from Dutch and irregular Indonesian forces to Republican forces. The next few weeks and months will determine the destiny of Indonesia. Great. We have the Republic of Indonesia under Sukarno, and then we have the Kingdom of the Netherlands. But I'll see you guys, as I said, once we get retreat to the jungle. Okay, we also have the Siege of Sur Surakarta. Indonesian Republican forces infiltrated areas around Surakarta and are poised to launch an assault. Dutch forces and their local allies were unable to stop the rebel advance and are fortifying the city center. The operations occurred just days before a ceasefire in Java is expected to come in force. The Republican government uh, uh, dismissed accusations in its offensive, uh, claiming its forces will comply with the ceasefire. When it comes to effect, the number of Republican forces involved are said to be in the hundreds. And this is an escalation. We now also have the Siege of Surakarta lifted a couple days later. The timely deployment of RST commandos resulted in rallied Republican forces who were on the verge of capturing Surakarta. The Dutch are said to be thrilled that once again its forces triumphed in conventional engagement against rebel fighters. However, the heavy fighting has exposed the false claims recently made by colonial officials, though the rebel resistance has virtually ceased to exist. Despite the public praise for its forces, privately many colonial officials are concerned that the regular forces were only able to beat off the rebel will attack with the aid of elite forces. The Republican government praised the bravery of its fighters, saying it represents the people's never-ending devotion to a free Indonesia. That is that. And in Java, following all that, there's been a ceasefire. The people of Java can finally breathe a sigh of relief as the ceasefire comes into effect on the island. Colonial and Republican forces are reported to be ensuring that the ceasefire conditions are met. Both sides do not want upcoming peace talks to suffer any setbacks. Despite this, there are reports of some local irregular militia forces resisting efforts by the Republican military to integrate them or disarm them. The Republican government is seeking to establish an organized national military uh, before the Dutch, Dutch accept their independence. The Dutch forces will be happy to see an end to the deadly hit and run attacks by Republican forces engaged in the guerrilla war. Great. Uh, there's also now been a ceasefire in Sumatra. I've also put on the Maoist uh, radio station because we are Maoists, but the ceasefire in Sumatra. The people of Sumatra can finally breathe a sigh of relief as the ceasefire comes to an effect on the island. Colonial Republican forces are reported to be ensuring that the ceasefire conditions are met. Both sides do not want upcoming peace talks to suffer any setbacks. Despite this, there are reports of some local regular militia forces resisting efforts by the Republican military to integrate them or disarm them. Uh, the Republican government is seeking to establish an organized national uh, military before the Dutch accept their independence. Peace is next. Okay, we completed the focus, but now we also have this. The PRC establishes foreign ministries. The People's Republic of China has established foreign ministries in the United States and Soviet Union after the four-year-long war, and even before that with the Republic of China. The People's Republic of China is claiming the government to be the one true China, while the Republic of China has occupied Taipei, where now it seems the USSR has recognized the new Chinese government, while the US has still recognized the Republic of China as the one uh, China. Interesting. 
and now a Mongolian recognition campaign. Mongolia is a complicated and unstable history since the fall of the Mongol Empire. In a massive warlord era of Chinese politics, the small and isolated nation of Mongolia was forgotten by the great powers and thus never received any formal recognition. After the Bolg Khan and the occupying Chinese forces were ousted by the Red Army in 1921, the country was effectively under Soviet control and lacked any official statehood. Despite independently taking part in the battles against Japan during World War II, Mongolia's independence was still only recognized by the Soviets. However, with the Cold War intensifying throughout the world, the Soviet Union has led a considerable intensification in efforts to give the Mongols recognition as an independent state. This move represents a major step forward for the Mongolian national identity and could possibly give Mongolia its status as a universally recognized power back for the first time since the 14th century. Interesting news. Uh, but now, let's take stock. And we're only going to get 50 Mosin Nagants. Uh, we have a much better stockpile than that event probably thinks we have. We actually are gaining some guns because we're actually making some with our M1 carabines. Turns out we're doing pretty alright with steel. So I'll see you guys once we take stock. Okay, back to Indonesia. There's been a round table conference. Our days of fighting represents in the Netherlands, Indonesian nationalists, and federal consultative assembly representing Dutch established states in Indonesia are meeting in at the Hague. Uh, the United Nations Commission on Indonesia is facilitating the talks. The discussions are aimed at ensuring all outstanding issues between the Netherlands and Indonesia result prior to the cession of sovereignty to an independent Indonesia. Although the nationalists hope for a strong central government in support of the national unity, uh, before the conference they agreed to compromise with the Federal Consultative Assembly for a unified position on a future cons constitution. Let the talks begin. Okay, we have the PRC founding the new China. Let me Put on some appropriate music for that. Uh, oh, hold on. There we go. Uh, the People's Republic of China finally won its civil war against the Republic of China. The second phase of the Chinese Civil War has come to an end. The Republic of China and the People's Republic of China have been fighting for three years now. Even before that, they were fighting since 1927, up to 1936, when China was invaded by the Japanese Empire. After World War II in 1946, the fighting resumed. It was a stalemate up until 1948. In 1948, the Communist Chinese forces broke through Beijing and went into central China, causing hundreds of thousands of democratic Chinese soldiers to be encircled. It wasn't until late 1949 that the Republic of China fled to Taiwan and other parts of Southeast Asia. Premier Mao has declared a new China, one that will be only the strong China. Hundreds of thousands gathered in Beijing as they watched Mao Zedong give a speech. The war in China has calmed down for now. Interesting. Okay, we're taking stock. We also have Operation North. The Soviet Union was accused of deporting thousands of Jehovah Witnesses from the Baltic and other Eastern European areas of Siberia. Reports indicate the Ministry of State Security recently carried out degrees on the deportations and confiscations of properties. The numbers of Jehovah Witnesses are said to be in the thousands. The Jehovah Witnesses have long run afoul of Soviet authorities by refusing to participate in state functions, including serving in the military. For many Soviet officials, these religious beliefs represent a direct challenge to a state that has to be rooted out before it spreads to other populations. The action is likely to garner some international criticism over religious persecution. Unfortunate. Uh, but now, we're going to show the people a better future, which will give us women's rights, affirmative action, and most importantly, a liberation war. This is in contrast to the people who already love us, and we're going to actually do the smart thing and give us give them a reason to love us i have a feeling this is what the the malay army did in real life basically being like they already love us why do we have to make them love us even more and after that i think we can start on showing the british a way out they have to leave malaysia we're going to build a soviet paradise and a red sun in the sky all i can say Okay, we also now have the Republic of China and Taiwan. The second phase of the Chinese Civil War has come to an end. The Republic, okay, this is what we've been read before. This year, however, there was a peace talk with the Marshall Mission about possible armistice for division of China or a peace plan. This plan failed and the fighting continued with the Yangtze offensive of southern China. After several routes by the Republic of China, the Republican government has fled to the island of Taiwan. Chiang Kai-shek has stated that the Republic of China lives on, and that one day the Republic of China flag will be waved over mainland China again. Reports uh, of hundreds of thousands of soldiers and refugees are fleeing through Tibet, Burma, Thailand, and Taiwan. Speaking of Burma, you can see there's this little state down here called the Yunnan Anti-Communist National Salvation Army. They actually have a little focus tree but they are pretty difficult 
And you like basically you have to wait till the Korean War, and then you gotta hope to strike the Chinese. But uh, we can also see the Republic of China will also finish with this. They actually have a pretty decent focus tree, and it splits into uh, let's see, yeah, follow the mainland, or uh, or they can actually win the civil war. And that basically means you have to hold Shanghai. There's actually a super event for it. But I'm Nick D4VIS. I'll see you guys next time.